Hi, I'm Dr. Laurent Bannock and I'm the Director of the Institute of Performance Nutrition and in this Science to Practice overview I will be focusing on vitamin D and athletes. So the main source of vitamin D for us is via sunlight and the way this works is through the UVB radiation exposure from the sun to our skin which the body then processes to produce active vitamin D which travels to all the tissues in the body. And it's also important to note that we can also get some but a far smaller amount of vitamin D3 from our diet. And these foods still produce the same vitamin D metabolites that will result in this active form of vitamin D. So what does vitamin D actually do for us? Well, whether it's through sunlight or through our food, this active form of vitamin D binds to a receptor, which then binds to DNA and activates certain genes that then results in the production of specific proteins, which then have many functions on the body to include the immune system, bones, muscles, neurons and also the mitochondrial oxidative functioning. So this is all very well but why is this actually relevant to us? Well it's relevant because scientists have estimated that 50% of Europeans have insufficient levels of vitamin D and the numbers are not too dissimilar for other parts of the world and this can cause a number of issues which might include inferior muscle repair, uh, attenuated rotator cuff healing in one specific study, perhaps more interestingly impaired strength recovery following ACL surgery, but of particular importance is the fact that it has been shown to increase susceptibility to upper respiratory tract infection. Okay, so we now know it's relevant. But why is this actually occurring? Why are so many people dealing with low levels of vitamin D? And the main reasons for this includes too much time being spent indoors. We work indoors, we live indoors, we spend a lot of time outside, uh, outside of the sun, so to speak. Very little amounts of vitamin D3 are actually found in the diet, as I've already said. And we have a high prevalence of sunscreen use which can block the body's ability to synthesize vitamin D and also of particular importance here particularly for people like me living in higher latitudes like in the United Kingdom significant cloud cover for many months of the year is also a major factor here. So we know it's relevant we know why it happens but how do we actually prevent deficiency of vitamin D? And a lot of this will come back to this concept of testing. Test, don't guess. Why test? Why guess, sorry, when you can know? It's something you can do through laboratories, you can do it through home test kits. And for us as performance nutrition practitioners and sports scientists, this is a tool in our toolbox that we have at our disposal. And research tends to show us that levels of less than 50 nanomoles per litre should be avoided, although this does vary from case to case. And for most, limited sunlight exposure will lead to low levels of this active form of vitamin D being produced, particularly for those that have darker skin. So it's clear that supplementing with vitamin D may be necessary and in particular for those um, living or training during the winter months. So we now have a case for supplementation of vitamin D but how do we supplement safely with vitamin D? And research shows us that around 4,000 international units per day is effective although lesser amounts may also be warranted. And there are a number of key considerations that we need to bear in mind. Number one, more does not mean better with vitamin D because too much can be toxic. Hence, tests don't guess. 
If you spend time in the sun or train in a sunny climate, you more than likely don't need to supplement. But once again, test, don't guess. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, for those of you that are elite professional athletes, if you're going to supplement with vitamin D, as always, you must check that your products are tested for banned substances, such as those that are um, going to bear the uh, Inform Sport logo, as you can see here on the slide. Now, you really need to read um, further into this topic, and I suggest that you read this open access paper on vitamin D and the athlete by Dr. Daniel Owens and colleagues, uh, and also special um, uh, thanks goes to Dr. Owens for his input into a number of the slides that you've already seen. I also recommend that you listen to my podcast with another one of the authors, Professor Graham Close. Um, it's a few years old now, but still absolutely relevant to this day. Highly recommend you listen to that. And of course, if you're interested in our various outputs, including the podcast and other podcast episodes, please go to our website where you can also learn about our online diploma in performance nutrition, which is all about training you to become a highly trained specialist in sport and exercise nutrition. So there you have it. Thank you very much for listening. Please visit our website at www.theiopn.com or look out for our other social media channels at The IOPN and of course this YouTube channel. Take care.